and welcome aboard the Pictured Rocks Cruises. Well, today's cruise will encompass 34 miles round trip, and we'll be seeing 13 miles of pristine sandstone cliffs that drop off into the lake, some of them towering over 200 feet high. We'll also see a few sandy beaches, a couple small waterfalls, and on a return trip, we'll stop by an old lighthouse and I'll tell you about its history. So the boat that you're riding on today is called the Grand Island. And she's powered by two Cummins diesel engines. Those bad boys are going to be pushing us along at a neck snapping speed of a whopping 13 miles an hour. Oh yeah. Hold on tight. Munising Bay is four miles long by two miles wide. And there are two entrances into Munising Bay. You take a look over on your left hand side, that's base over there. That's the West Channel. And directly in front of the boat now, the way that we'll be taking out to the Pritchard Rocks today, that's the East Channel. Now situated between the two channels, there's a fairly large landmass over there. Well, that's all an island called Grand Island. Grand Island has around 26 miles of shoreline, around 14,000 acres of land over there, along with two inland lakes. To compare Grand Island size, Grand Island is four times larger than Mackin Island. And for those of you that know a little bit about the New York area, well, Grand Island is right around the same size as Manhattan in New York City. And for those of you from the Detroit area, well, Belle Isle, that sits in the Detroit River, could fit into one of the inland lakes over on Grand Island. Well, the United States Forest Service bought Grand Island back in 1990 from the Cleveland Cliffs, and since then have turned it into quite a nice recreational area. Well, there's plenty of hiking and biking trails all around the island, along with a nice selection of campsites throughout. If we were to go straight north across Lake Superior from this point, 165 miles, we would reach Canada. And if we were to travel from the farthest most western point of the lake in Duluth, Minnesota, to the farthest most eastern point in Sault Ste. Marie, we would travel a distance of around 360 miles. And Lake Superior has a shoreline of around 1,730 miles. To compare Lake Superior size, Lake Superior is right around the same size as the state of Maine and slightly larger than the state of South Carolina. So what I'm getting at with all these fancy numbers is, well, it's a pretty big lake. Not only is it the largest of the five Great Lakes, it's the coldest, the cleanest, the deepest, the deepest spot at 1,333 feet deep and by far the roughest. The areas that we're going to be going over today in the late parts of the fall and early winter can experience wave heights anywhere from 20 to 30 feet. Oh, these pictured rocks are a Precambrian sandstone which dates them back over 500 million years ago. There are two distinct layers in the sandstone. The upper layer, that grayish color, that's a dolomitic sandstone. And the bottom color, that tannish color, that's a Jacobsville sandstone. And you may notice some streaks of color running through the cliffs. Well, the reds, oranges, yellows, browns, and purples you'll be seeing along today's cruise. That's due to an iron mineral seepage. The blues and the greens are from a copper mineral seepage. The black is from manganese mineral seepage. And the white, well, that's from a seagull's seepage. Just making sure you guys are still awake. Well, the white is actually from calcium. Then you may notice a lot of vegetation running into the cliffs here. The reason why these trees and bushes are able to survive is because all of that land over on your left-hand side, that's all still Grand Island. And Grand Island protects this part of the cliffs from the heavy northwest wind and waves that we receive. Oh, we are coming up on our 
our first point of interest. It's called Miner's Castle. Miner's Castle stands around 75 feet high, and you may notice up on top of the castle, and up on top of the cliffs, a few observation decks. Well, those are put there by the Park Service. Also up on top, there's a nice little information center, along with picnic tables and barbecue pits. Miner's Castle is the only rock formation along the Pitchard Rocks that you can drive out to. Take H58 east out of town, follow the road signs, should take you about 20 minutes to drive out here. Well, we were actually coming by here just last fall, and we were lucky enough to witness a wedding being performed right on top of Miner's Castle. All of the passengers oohed and odd. <laughs> thought that'd be a beautiful spot to have a wedding. I agree. But that's the only marriage I know of that started off on the rocks. <laughs> Trust me, my jokes only get worse. You can also drive out to Miner's Beach, follow the same road signs you would to get out to Miner's Castle. And for those of you that have seen the music video Born Free by Kid Rock, the well, majority of that music video was filmed right here on Miner's Beach. Situated a couple hundred feet beyond the beach, there's a road and a parking lot at each end. But where the beach ends, so do the roads. And if you'd like to see any more of the Pitcher Rocks cliffs by land, well, you're going to have to hike. And these next three large coves are called the Painted Coves. Now remember your colors, the reds, oranges, yellows, browns, and purples. That's from iron. The blues and the greens are from copper. Black is from manganese, and white is from calcium. You can see that this first large cove is mainly made of iron. Well, the Pritchard Rocks have received a lot of uh, national attention lately. Just over a week ago, a large section of cliff had came crashing down. Well, that large section was right here off to our right, a 200-foot section that came crashing down. Normally, that only happens in the springtime of the year after the snow melt and frost action. It's very rare to be seeing it happen in the middle of summer.
called Mosquito Beach. Mosquito Beach is a favorite overnight campsite for those hikers along the Lakeshore Trail. It's situated at the end of the beach, kind of over there in the shadows. You may notice the mouth of a river. Oh, well, that's the Mosquito River. And it's said to have by a local fisherman to have a great rainbow trout run in the early spring. And these are the caves of all colors. It's a great example of how the wind and waves carve out all kinds of different formations and sea caves. If you look up on top of the cliff, you may notice those small bushes. Well, those are actually stunted trees, stunted by the weight of the ice in the winter time. And if you follow the shoreline down, you'll notice an archway. Well, that's our Lover's Leap. I wouldn't recommend jumping off Lover's Leap, though. No matter how much you think you're in love, the water beneath is only four feet deep. Well, and this is Rainbow Cave. If you look closely enough into Rainbow Cave, you may notice that groundwater seepage falling from the top down onto the surface of the water. That groundwater seepage falls all year round, and the wintertime creates beautiful icicles and formations. And if you look halfway up inside of Rainbow Cave, you'll see a great example of that copper seepage, that blue and green coloring. With enough imagination, people see all kinds of different things to this series of cliff. Oh, people see farm scenes, old automobiles, skyscrapers. Actually, just last summer, I had a gentleman come up to me and point out the profile of Dwayne Johnson. Oh, wow. Yeah. I only see the rock. Oh, my. I saw that was good.
all the piling on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Are you kidding? No, I don't know. I think we're too. Oh, that's all the piling on us. Well, this next rock formation here is called Indian Head Rock. Local Native Americans that once came canoeing through here were quite frightened of it. Gitchy Manitou, they call them, or the Great Spirit. How I see the old Indian Head, picture its chin at water level, then halfway up that large outcropping, picture that as its nose, and its forehead arches back into the trees, and the trees and bushes act as its headdress. Well, Indian Head stands around 180 feet high. coming up. It's called Grand Portal. According to government charts, Grand Portal is the largest rock formation along the Pritchard Rocks, towering at around 210 feet high. There used to be a series of caves and caverns that stuck out to where the boat is now, covering around six acres, but that all came crashing down around 120 years ago. As we take a left turn out to the lake, you'll start to see what we call Battleship Row. It's the sterns or back ends of several of the old time sailing vessels, all lined up on the beach. There's the beach, and here they come now, Battleship Row. here is called the broken flower base. Picture the trees as the flowers and the rock at the base. The base has a little bit of a right chip to it. Some hockey fans from the Detroit area says it looks a lot like the Stanley Cup. I'm surprised they can still remember what that thing looks like. <laughs> These next formations come out here. They're called the Indian drums. They kind of look like bear's feet said that when waves come crashing into there, it sounds a lot like thunder. Oh, 
It's called Chapel Beach. Chapel Beach is also a favorite overnight campsite for those hikers along the Lakeshore Trail. But situated at the end of the beach, you'll notice that small waterfall. Well, that's the lower Chapel Falls. Just above those falls, crossing over the river, you'll see a small footbridge. Well, that's a continuation of the Lakeshore Trail. Well, this is our last point of interest. It's called Chapel Rock. You may notice that lone white pine tree standing on top of Chapel Rock. The only way that tree survives and gets its nutrients are from the roots that extend over to the mainland. <laughs> well, there used to be a stone archway that supported those roots, but that came crashing down around 60 years ago. Yet, the tree lives on. Live on my feet. Well, we are going to be on a return trip now. And in some areas, I'll try to get you a little bit closer, depending on kayak traffic. For the most part, just kind of sit back, relax, and enjoy the cruise. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to bring them on up to us. Or stop us as we're walking around the boat. We'd be happy to help you out.
Well, this is the oldest channel lighthouse. It's one of the oldest still standing lighthouses on Lake Superior. Built back in 1867, just after the Civil War. The last man to run this old lighthouse was a man named George Pryor. George Pryor lived out here in considerable isolation with his wife and their 12 children. And the people that own those summer homes off to the left also own a small portion of this lighthouse and they're responsible for its maintenance work. And around 20 years ago, they built that small break wall around it to help it from erosion. And this body of water that we're going over right now, it freezes each and every winter, around three to five feet thick. Plenty of local fishermen have ice shacks spread out all around the bay. And Munising does have quite a bit of winter activities to offer. There's hundreds of miles of cross-country skiing trails, hundreds of miles of snowmobile trails. And over the past few winters, ice climbing has become very popular. Well, we are going to be docking soon. This would be a good time to look around your seats, make sure you have everything. Well, people leave all kinds of things, car keys, wallets, cell phones. Just make sure you have everything. Also, if I could have everybody on that back bottom deck, please come inside and find a seat. And everybody, please remain seated until we've completed the entire docking process. Once we've completed it, I'll get back on the mic and let you know when you're free to go. Well, we do hope you enjoyed your cruise with us today. And on behalf of Josiah, Kane, and myself, Jacob, we thank you once again for joining us, and we hope you all have a safe and enjoyable rest of your vacation. Thank you once again.